my heart Oh, this spirit Give me the words now That will bring the light Words on the wings of the morning sun Dark night will fade away Lifting my heart, my heart from this heart. Yes. 
Keep on talking to me. Keep on talking to me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Greetings and welcome to our teleconference. Another week we are here to give thanks and praise to the Lord. God bless you for joining us. And today we remember Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. And we're going to talk about Palm Sunday today. Oh, God is good. We went to church today, had a wonderful time, and saw the power of God in the house of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. And we went, had a wonderful time in the house of the Lord today. It was really wonderful. I, you know, we witnessed the power of the Holy Ghost healing somebody who came in walking with a stick and then the prior came up, the prior went out and he didn't need a stick anymore. And so Jesus is powerful yesterday, today and forever. His power is still the same. Praise the name of the Lord. So God bless you. We're going to go straight into our um, message today, which is taken from John chapter 12. St. John chapter 12. Praise the Lord. And we're just going to look at <clears throat> Jesus entering into Jerusalem just before his crucifixion. So the topic, our topic today is Jesus, Palm Sunday, Jesus entering into Jerusalem. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm going to read a few verses and then I will ask some of our um, partakers to, you know, give us a little thought at the end. But I want to look at this time, this triumphant time of Jesus as he entered into Jerusalem, taken from John chapter 12. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we bless your name. Thank you for giving us your word. Lord, help us to unravel your word. Let it be inspiration to our heart. We thank you, we praise you, we give you glory. Have your way, we pray. Bless everyone that join and let this word be a blessing to the hearer. We give you thanks, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm going to read some verse from chapter, um, Amen, from St. John chapter 12. And it says, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover of Bethany, where Lazarus, which he, which has been dead, whom he raised from the dead, 
They did make him a supper. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table. Then took Mary a pound of ointment, a spinknard, very costly, and anoint Jesus' feet and wipe his feet with her hair. And, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and give to the poor? This he said not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bear that what was put therein. Then Jesus said, Let her alone against the day of my burial has she kept this. For the poor you have always with you, but me you not have always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there, and they came, they came not to see Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. And the chief priests consulted that they may kill him, kill Lazarus, also. But the chief priest consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death, because that the reason, by that reason of him, the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. Now we see, proceeding the um, entry into Jerusalem, it says that um, on the sixth day before the Passover, Lazarus was with Jesus. The Lazarus, he rose from the dead, whom he had rose from the dead, and they made a supper. They made a dine dinner for him. And Martha served and Lazarus, the one that was sat with him on the table. So Mary, the one who Jesus healed, came with a pound of ointment, a sprinkler very costly, anoint of his feet and wipe his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then Jesus then said one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, who should betray him? Why was this ointment so not sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? So you see, some people are just looking at the material side of things all the time and not the spiritual. We can see that Judas himself did not care about the master because he knew that the master, the master said that he would be crucified and he knew what Mary was doing was a profound thing that will always be remembered. That she got this costly ointment and anoint his feet with the costly ointment. But because Judas was not, heart was not with Jesus, he was a betrayer. He betrayed Jesus as we could see. He said, why was this ointment not sold? He's thinking about the material thing, not the spiritual thing. Not that the Lord came down from heaven to suffer and died and bled for our sins. He wasn't looking at that point. He was just looking at the material aspect of life. And so sometimes we have to think about the spiritual aspect, what Jesus came for. Jesus came to earth for no other reason but to die. He came to die that we might live. He came to give his life for us. And that's a great sacrifice. No greater sacrifice can we think of. And he says, no greater love has any man, but that a man should lay down his life for his friend. That's what Jesus did, lay down his life for us, which we'll see. But proceeding this, he says, Mary anoint him. And Judas was not happy with that. But Jesus said, let her alone, leave her. Against the day of my burial has she kept this. 
for the poor you have with you always, but me not always. Jesus came to fulfill a mission. The mission that he came to fulfill was to give his life, to let his blood be spilled for us. Because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. So from the outset, Jesus knew what his father sent him to do, to sacrifice himself to be nailed on the cross. It was all prophesied. It's nothing. He knew it because he had full knowledge of his mission on earth. He knew. And he told his disciples that the Son of Man, when he, Jesus was with his disciples, it says, he stood before the temple, the physical temple, and he said, this temple will I tear down and build it up in three days. And they were all looking at the material aspect of the building, the actual structure building. And Jesus was not talking about the structure building. He was talking about his body because his body was the temple of the living God where God abode in him. He said, this temple I will tear down and, bring, and raise it up in three days. And they all said, this man must be crazy. How can he tear down this building which took 40 years to build and build it up in one day? But they did not see. Every time that Jesus speaks to us, we have to listen with our spiritual ear and we have to see with our spiritual eye what God is saying to us because it is very important that we interpret the Word of God correctly. And so Jesus said, Leave her alone. Against the day of my burial has she done this. And she did a great deed. She did a great, great deed. To anoint the master. To anoint the king of kings. To anoint the Lord of Lord. He is the king of glory. Came down to make that ultimate sacrifice for us. If Jesus did not come to earth, we would have no hope. Because the word says all the blood on Jewish altar slain could not give the guilty conscience peace, nor wash away the stain. All the blood, all the lamb, the turtle dove, the he goats, the bullocks that was sacrificed in Jewish altar could not save this world from a Christless eternity. It took the blood of Jesus. How much should we be grateful? And if Lazarus had that, if, if, if Judas, the, the, the betrayer, had that vision and understanding of what Jesus had done and what Jesus came to do, he would not say to this woman, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? He would not have said that. But he was not looking and seeing the great gifts of God that God came, that Jesus came to give us. And much more, it says, much more, much people of the Jews knew that he was there. So they, much of the Jews knew that he came to have, have the feast, have the dinner, supper. They knew, so they came. They not only came for Jesus, of course they came to see Jesus, but more likely they went, came to see Lazarus, which they knew was dead, and how Jesus rose him from the dead. You know when you, a man is dead and then you hear that that man is living again, you want to see that man because you seen as believing, to many people seen as believing, but for people of faith, we don't have to see to believe. That's why the Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we don't have to see everything with our physical eyes to believe. We believe through faith. But much of the people, they wanted to see Lazarus. They knew that Jesus raised, rose him from the dead after four days. After him being in the, in the tomb, Jesus rose him and they wanted to see him. So they came. And it says, but the priests, the chief priests consulted that they may put Lazarus to death. How evil can, how evil can people be? 
How evil can people be? Because Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead. Because Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead. They wanted to kill Lazarus to prove a point. Point they wanted to prove was that oh he did not really raise him for the dead. For that reason they wanted to kill Lazarus. They wanted to kill him. They wanted to kill him because they wanted to because the Jews began to believe in Jesus and they didn't want anyone to believe in Jesus. So they consulted that they mislead Lazarus just to prove that Jesus did not raise him. You see how the devil works? You see the ways of the devil? That's the ways of the that's the way of the devil. Because it says by the reason of him many of the Jews went away and believe on Jesus. So because Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead, it says many of the Jews believed on Jesus because of that. You know something? We have to do something for people to be drawn to God. You know, we have to be able to show what God can do. And we can only show what God can do through our faith in Him. By proving Him. We have to prove God that God can do all things. We are here in His stead. Jesus says, the poor you have with you always, but me you not have always. You we won't see Jesus now in a physical form. He is here with us in the form of the Holy Spirit. You working through us for His praise and His glory. So it says, because by the reason of him, many believe because people want to see something. They say, you believe you're Christian, you're a child of God. Show me what your God can do. And we can say, my God is able to do anything. My God is a God of impossibility. We can stand and say that because we know God. We know Jesus. We know his power. His power to heal the sick and to raise the dead, open the sight of the blind. So this occurred just prior to Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. It says on the next day, much people came to the feast and they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So the next day following the supper, much, much people came to the feast that when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. And it went on to say they took palm branches. So this is where Palm Sunday coming from. They took palm branches and went to meet him, cried, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Blessed is the King. Jesus is the King of Israel. He is the King of earth and King of heaven. He is the King. There is none above Him. And so when we know Jesus, we know God. He said, when you've seen me, He said to Philip, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So they realize that this is God's son, his only son. Because God so loved the world that his Bible says he gave his only begotten son. That he who believe it will not perish, but have everlasting life. And Jesus went and and Jesus went. They found the ass, he sat thereon. Fear not, daughters of Zion, behold the king cometh, sitting upon a cloth. In verse 15, this was taken from Zechariah chapter 9. Zechariah, way before Jesus came to earth, he prophesied these words. You see, the, the Bible is no contradictory book. It's not a contradictory book. We just need to see what God is saying to us. And we got to open our spiritual eyes and see what he's saying. In Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, 
It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout. Hallelujah. O daughters of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly riding upon an ass and upon a cloth, and furious and falls as of an ass. So way before Jesus came, Zechariah prophesied that the King of Glory, the Great I Am, the Almighty God, would come unto us, be clothed in the flesh, manifested himself in the flesh, walk among men, talk among men, taught men, show men the way of salvation, shed his blood, Behold, daughters of Zion, rejoice greatly and shout. You know, we, when we are happy, we can shout. We can lift our voice. We can glorify God. We can give Him the praise. We can give Him the glory when we are in the presence of God. Because the Bible says, in the presence of God is fullness of joy. When Jesus draw near to us and empower us, we can sing and shout for joy. Rejoice greatly. That's what Zachariah said. O daughters of Zion, shout, O daughters of Jerusalem, behold thy king, the Lord cometh, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just having salvation, lowly. Lowly because he was born in the most humble place and we can perceive. He wasn't born in a five-star hotel, but he was born in a manger where you keep animals. That's where the king of glory was born, lowly. He was high above all, but he humbled himself and became low. What a God we serve. What a God we serve. And then in St. John chapter 19. I can read a few verses from verse 13, John chapter 19 from verse 28. And it came to pass when he had come to Bethany and Beth and Pet Bethany the mount called Mount of Olive, he sat, he sent two of his disciples saying, go ye on, go he unto the village over against you in which your entrance he shall find a cloth tied, whereupon never a man sat, loose him and bring him hither. And if any man asks you, why do ye lose him? Thus shall he say unto him, because the Lord hath need of him. Praise God. But Jesus knew all things. He knew the prophecy of Zechariah. He knew there would be a ass tied. Where the ass would be tied. He knew the master of the ass would say, Why lose him? Wherefore, this ass that no man has ever sat upon. Hallelujah. Bring him hither, Jesus said. Bring him hither. And if any man asks you why ye lose him, thus shall he say unto him, Because the Lord hath need of him. The word of God is powerful. It covers everything. There's no, there's no need to question the word of God. He says, bring him hither. If any man asks you why she loves him, tell him because the Lord is need of him. And just as Jesus said, so they went their way and found even as the Lord said unto them. And they were loosing the cloth. The owner thereof said unto them, why loose he the cloth? And they said, The Lord hath need of him. That's it. The word of the Lord prevail. 
So they bore the ass unto Jesus and they cast their garment on the cloth and they, and they sat Jesus thereon. And as he, as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he had come nigh, even now to the descent of Mount Olive, the whole multitude, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice. Praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they have seen. Oh, praise God. So now he come into the Jerusalem. They knew what God had, they know what the Lord had done. They know the great miracles that he had performed. They knew how he is, he raised the layman at the pool of Bethsaida. He knew how he opened the eyes of blind Bartimaeus. He knew how they knew how he rose Lazarus from the dead. They knew how he fed the multitude. They knew how he gave the beatitude. He, he, they knew how he stilled the waves when they, she was in the boat and the boat was taken in water and he rose and said, Peace be still. They knew all the works that Jesus did. And so they knew at this time he's coming to the time when he would be arrested, taken before Pilate, and what would happen to him. And they all, the whole multitude and his disciples began to rejoice, giving God thanks, giving God praise, giving God glory. It says that the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praising God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, all the mighty works that Jesus had done. They all came together and they all began to praise God as he descended of the Mount of Olives. As he descended, they spread their clothes in before, on before the us as they rode and they took palm trees and they spread it to walk because he's a king. You, we got to give honor to the king. We have to give glory to the king. We have to give praises to the king because they realize that Jesus was not just another man. He was not just a prophet, another prophet. He was the son of the living God. And they're saying, blessed be the king. Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Blessed is the king because Jesus is king. He is Lord. He is king. He is Lord of all. Blessed be the king. Because when they realize all that Jesus has done, they realize this is not just an ordinary prophet. This is not like any prophet that we've seen. This man is different. He is the Messiah. This is what we are witnessing. So the whole multitude began to rejoice. We should rejoice in Jesus. When we think of what he has done, we should rejoice and be glad in him. They say, blessed is be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And as he journeys, some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said, Master, rebuke thy disciple. Praise the Lord. Rebuke thy disciple. The Pharisees said to the Master, said to Jesus, rebuke thy disciple. Jesus answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones, the stones would cry out. The stones would cry out because God must get the glory. God must get the praise. If we don't praise him, every 
nothing in creation will praise God. If we don't praise Him, the trees will praise Him, the rocks will praise Him, the wind will praise Him, the seas will praise Him. Everything that we see, the grass on the ground, every animal on the, in the field will praise God. Because he's, he's Lord of all. So the Pharisees said unto him, Master, rebuke the disciples. Let no one stop you from praising God. Let no man stop you from glorifying God. And let no man stop you from giving God the praise. Let no man tell you not to praise God, not to cry out, not to cry out and shout. The Bible says, cry out and shout. Thou inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Zion in the, in, of Israel in the midst of thee. Cry out and shout. No matter what's going on, sometimes we have these issues in life. We have these things that come upon us and we know we are in a war. There's, if we are a child of God, we are in a war. There's no way to avoid it. That's why we have to be as soldiers. That's why the Bible equipped us and tell us to wear the whole armor. You know, if people are going out to war, they are dressed up with all sorts of bulletproof and they have this and they have shield and they have, they're well armed and whatever, you know, everything to protect themselves. God, doesn't, God has sent us out to fight without arming us. We are well protected in Jesus. We are well protected because he protects us. If thee, I tell you, he said, Jesus said, I tell you that, that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Can you imagine? We not giving God praise when we don't give God praise, when we don't give God glory. And we can be walking and we can be saying thank you, Jesus. And we can be moving, we can be, we can be doing, we can be at work and we can say thank you, Jesus. Because God listened to our heart. We can be giving God praise 24 7 We can be praying to God 24 7 Only when we are asleep, of course, we can't pray in our sleep. But once we are awake, we can be giving God praise praise we can give him god thanksgiving we can give him praise because he's worthy yes if these if these these multitude and the disciples who are praising god should stop the stones would cry out and when in verse 41 says and when he come near he beheld the city and wept over it can you imagine they are the great God looking at Jerusalem, his people, how they have wandered and strayed away from him. And he wept over Jerusalem, saying, If thou hast known, even thou, at least unto this thy day, the things which belong it unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thee. If they only had realized, even though they praise him and glorify him when he descended from the Mount of Olive, but as you see, the time came when he was taken prisoner in Pilate Judgment Hall, and you did not hear anyone pleading for Jesus. Even the time when it was to release one prisoner, they said, Give us Barabbas. Barabbas was a robber. And they said, he said, what shall I do of this man Jesus? The same multitude said, crucify him. Where were these great multitude when he, they, he was offered? Because at that time, one prisoner was allowed to go free and they they were given a choice. Should I, should Pharaoh said, Pharaoh said, should I release Jesus or should I release this Barbarus? And they said, this man crucify him. They said, crucify Jesus. You see, 
So they were there with him when he descended and they give God praise. But at a time when it was a time that he could have been freed, but it had to be fulfilled. Prophecy had to be fulfilled. And he had to be crucified. He knew it, that he had to lay down his life for us. And so we should be eternally grateful to the Lord for what he has done. And he wept over the city. Jesus wept over Jerusalem because he knew what was going to happen. And we know well after he, his, his resurrection and his, and his ascension that the, the enemies came and took over Jerusalem and all was taken in captive. All of them was taken in captive and scattered all over the world. Those Jews in Jerusalem were scattered all over and taken captive. But Jesus said, if, he, if thou hast known, even at the least of thy day, the things that belongeth unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thee. Imagine, it must have been sad to know that day. They could have petitioned for Jesus, but the Bible, the Bible, I mean, prophecy had to be fulfilled. But it says, For the day shall come upon thee, when thine enemies shall cast a trench around thee, and compass thee around, and keep thee in on every side, and shall slay thee, even with the ground, and thy children with thee, and they shall not leave thee one stone upon another, because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. Praise the Lord. Jesus love us. His entry into Jerusalem on this Palm Sunday was a triumphant one. But we see where that left him. That left him as he was they came by night. They, um, he was betrayed. After his betrayal, he was taken to Pilate Judgment Hall. He was mocked. He was jeered. They spat upon him. They put a crown of thorns upon him. They stripped him naked. Can you imagine? what they did to the Lord of glory, what they did to the great king, king of kings. Imagine what they did to him. And then they crucified the Lord upon the cross. Praise the name of the Lord. But we thank God and we give praise to the Almighty God that he saw it fit to sacrifice his only begotten son, his only son for us, to redeem us from sin, to redeem us from the grave, to de de redeem us from hell. We are grateful to God for what he has done. And so we should always in our heart have a heart of thanksgiving. The songwriter says, I will praise thee, O Lord. I will praise thee, O Lord, with a heart of thanksgiving. I will praise thee, O God. David, when David realized, David knew the Lord. The Lord revealed himself to David. And David knew the love of God. And he knew what God was, the grace and mercy of God. And when he saw how good God was, he says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Let us lift up his name. Let us glorify his name. He's worthy. He is a great God. He is a loving Savior. And all that happened 
to him was because of us. He paid the debt he did not owe. We owe a debt that we could not pay. We needed someone to wash our sins away. And Jesus was the one who came to wash our sins away. So now as we remember this Palm Sunday, the day that Jesus entered into Jerusalem for the last time before he was crucified, we remember Jesus, remember his love, remember his grace and his mercy towards us and we give him praise and we will join with the multitude. We will join with the multitude when, they, when he ascended, descended on Mount of Olives. We join them, we join the whole multitude of the disciples and we begin to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all his mighty works, for all his great works. Jesus came and Pilate, they could not find any fault with him, in him. Can you imagine? This man came, dwelt among us, lived among us, perfect, without sin, without fault. And Pilate said, I find no fault in him. Wash his hands. There was no fault in him. And yet he was crucified on the cross for us. Praise God. We give glory to God. We give praise to his name for his wonderful. I'm so glad that I know the Lord. I'm so glad that I found the Lord. Where would I be without Jesus? Where, where would we spend eternity lost in a world full of trouble, full of trial? Without Jesus, where would we be? So, brethren, we give all the praise, we give all the glory to God Almighty. For this time, when we remember Palm Sunday, he knew he was going into Jerusalem to be arrested, to be ridiculed, to be pure, to be spat upon, to be have a crown of thorns upon his head, to be stripped naked, to be mocked and jeered, to be slapped in his face, and so many things. He knew all these things. And some people don't understand when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, and when he prayed, the Bible said he prayed until his, he, he, his sweat became as drops of blood. He, he, he knew what was going to happen. Just, just imagine how Jesus felt when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was there and he knew that he was going to be arrested. He was going to be, he was going to be punished. He was going to be, all sorts of things was going to happen to him. He was going to be mocked and jeered. Just imagine. And he cried and said, Lord, if it was possible, if it is possible, if it, he knew it was not possible, but he said, if, if it is possible, let this cup. He knew he was going to be nailed to the cross. He cried out, he prayed to God, if it is possible. But he said, not my will, not my will, Lord, but thy will. So he surrendered himself. He surrendered himself to God. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising shame, and he sat up on the right hand of the throne of God, the right hand of power. And at his resurrection, he said, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. All power is given unto Jesus. And no one gave it to him. It was attributed to him. All power in heaven and earth is given to Jesus. So he's all powerful. He's all Lord of all. We give him praise. We give him glory. 
we give him honor. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. I have Sister McLean on here. God bless you, Sister McLean. I'm going to stop there because I would like on this Palm Sunday to hear a word from Sister McLean and maybe and also Pastor Winston. So, Sister McLean, God bless you and um, God bless you and would like you to say a few words for us. Also, Pastor Winston, God bless you. It is good to know the Lord. It is good to know the Lord. The Lord is good. Yes, it is good. He is greatly to be praised. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Sister McLean. Share a word with us regarding this Palm Sunday, this great time when we remember Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to say good evening to one and all, Brother Thompson. Amen. A pleasant good evening to you and all, Pastor McCann and Sister Rose, and oh, all who is on this platform this evening. I just want to greet you well in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thanking Him again for this another privilege. Praise God, we are alive and well. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So we have a right to praise Him. We have a right to adore Him. We have the right to exalt yes. Him, the King of Kings, yes. and the Lord, Lord of, of Lords. Lord. And so to, um, today, I'm so, I'm so happy today, and to know that Jesus came into the world to save sinners of which I am one. Mm. I am glad that my sins have been washed away. I am glad that Jesus paid the price. He paid the debt that I owed and could not pay. Mm -hmm. He paid the debt yes. that he did not know oh. how much he loved me. And not only me alone, the whole world. Yes. He died for every one yes. of us. And so we have the right to praise him. And as you said about the Palm Sunday, when he was entering into Jerusalem, the excitement. Yes. People spread palm leaves and mm -hmm. spread their clothes. Said, Blessed is he that cometh in the yeah, name of the yeah. Lord. They were so excited. Jesus was such a humble, humble man. He was very humble. Yes. Very humble, very unique, very loving. Praise that he rode up on a donkey to show that he's meek mm -hmm. and he's lowly. Praise God. And the same people who was Praising him. rejoicing yes. and was happy to see him and yes. spread their clothes. They were the same ones who say crucify, crucify. him That's right. and give unto us That's right. Bar Barabbas mm -hmm. and, and, and crucified Jesus. But thank God he was crucified for me. Praise God. And we are not mourning today. No. Praise God. We are celebrating yes. his birth. Hallelujah. His death and his resurrection. He is not in the grave. No. He is alive and well. The empty tomb is there to show that our Savior is alive. Yes. Praise God. And because he is alive today, we have the victory. We have been delivered. Amen. We have been set free. Praise God. We have been born again. Hallelujah. Great things you have done for Amen. me. Hallelujah. The songwriter said, have you seen what the Lord has done? What you're waiting for has come to pass. I'm so excited about this man, Jesus. I love him. I love him. Amen. Praise God. You have brought me from a mighty long way. And had it not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would Amen. be. That's but true. thank God I learned to humble myself. Yes. And I learned to wait upon the Lord. As the writer said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew, shall the renew their strength. They shall mm -hmm. mount up with wings like an eagle. Mm -hmm. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Praise God. <clears throat> and another song wrote, Teach me, Lord, how to wait, wait. upon you. Yes. And I found the answer. 
I learned to pray. Down on my knee since I learned to pray. And I'm so happy to know that I know this man for myself. Hallelujah. And you know, in the um the redemption, the song, um seven thirty seven from the redemption, there was one who was willing who was who was willing to die in my stead. That a soul so unworthy Amen. might live. And the path of the cross he was willing, he was willing to tread all the sins of my life to forgive. They are nailed the to cross. the cross. They are nailed to the cross. Oh, how much he was willing to bear. Amen. With what anguish and loss yes. Jesus went to, to the cross and he carried my sins with him there. Praise God. And to, today, Palm Sunday, we can say we are free. Yes. For our sins are washed yes, away. Yes, yes. Praise God. And we are rejoicing yes. in the full and free salvation. Yes. Praise God. I'm feeling very happy. Amen. Talking about the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise the name of Glory the Lord. He's God. worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be exalted. Praise God. The songwriter said, Man of sorrow, what a name yes. for the Son of God who came. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise God. And I'm so happy that um, I could be on this platform God bless again you. for the second week. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got many phone calls and I, I, um, I decline them. You know, because I just want to keep focus Amen. and just to listen, you know. As you always say, Brother Samson, iron sharpen it, iron. Oh, yes. You know, and the word of God is new every day. And and when we hear the word of God of so often and every day and we read it for ourselves, our faith, our faith develops in us. Mm -hmm. Our faith goes stronger because faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And by faith commit by hearing the word of God. You know? So the more you hear the word of God is the more our faith in us built up. You know? And I'm so glad I've learned to trust in Jesus. Hallelujah. When you trust in him and never fail, he will surely bring us out oh, yes, of our mess yes. and out of our condition. So let us give God all the praise. Praise God. He's worthy. This, 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 the psalmist said, Oh, let us exalt his name together. Praise God. We are here to exalt the name of the Lord. Bless the Lord. I won't go no further because um, the time is against us. God bless you all. And thanks, Brother Thompson, for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. God bless you and all those on the listeners on the platform. Hmm. God bless you all as we join in time to celebrate Palm Sunday. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. God bless you, Sister Mark. It's always good to have you, you know, because, I mean, you know, as you say, we do say iron sharp net tie, and it's always good to hear your words of encouragement because we know what you have been through. And I, I just like yes. people who have faith because, you know, faith is a great thing. And we know that you are a woman of faith because of what, you know, you have been through over the years, you know. Mm. And, you know, today we had a wonderful day at church, and, um, you know, we actually witnessed healing. So, you know, oh, there's great. a brother that came in and he said he had about four a car accident. He's got is broken up and mm -hmm. he had walking with stick. And they call him to pray and they uh, this is what's at the Hackney Pentecostal Church. And yeah, they call him to pray. Yes, and they got him he was healed. He was he wasn't walking with stick when they finished praying for him. So God oh. is same today. And he yes. to believe, to it. believe. He believed. Yes, yes, he mm -hmm. believed, and um, he was. He, he stopped walking. He wasn't walking with stick after he got prayer. So you know, oh, God, so God, you know, God is glory. real, brethren, and you know we have to prove God every time. We have to Forest, prove Him. Yes, so true. God wants us to prove Him, and the only way we can prove Him is put Him to the test. Uh -huh. God wants us to prove Him. He said, prove, prove Him now, herewith. 
for I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room to receive it. God is real and he wants us to prove him. And he's still in the healing. He's still in the healing. healing. He's still in the deliverance. Yes, still. He's still the great provider. Yeah. Never stop we need to just prove God and you know oh, take thank him you, at his Jesus. words. So I'm right to say it's, oh it's sweet to trust in Jesus. Just, just to take him you. at his word. Just to lean upon his promise. Upon his just promise. to just say to see, just say just the, the hallelujah. Lord. We need to prove God from day to day, <laughs> but we need to draw near yeah. to God because God is real. God is real. God bless you, Sister Mark. It's always good to hear you. God always have encouragement. We have Pastor Winston there. I don't know if he's nearby in the mic. But um, yes, it's good to have a good testimony of what God can do, you know. Um, Sister Rose, could I ask you to close us in song and then we'll close. Sister Rose, Great. have you got a song for us? Greetings. Greetings. God bless you all. I haven't got a song, but I know that. Our um, testimony, whatever the Lord did you. When He's uh, sacrificed for us to be saved. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. And He is Lord. Every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. He is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every knee bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Time and he is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead, and he is Lord. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ, oh, that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Amen. 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 God bless Amen. you. Thank you, Sister Rose. He is Lord. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ. There's no other God. There's no other Lord. There's no one else. No one else who will meet in heaven. Who is going to be King of glory. Who is going to be King of heaven and earth. Who is going to be Lord of all. Who reign forever not just you know the kings of this earth they work they live a hundred years and if they do but he will reign forever the kings and the queens of this earth they their they, they throne will last a few years hundred years but the, his throne is forever and ever he will reign forever king of kings and lord of lords lord of lord. oh, praise the name amen. of the lord jesus god bless you all. amen Amen. Amen.
Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you, Sister God Brina, you Sister PT, Pastor Winston, Sister Rose, and everyone else. God bless you. Have a great day. I'm going to pray. Father, I pray this time that you will bless everyone that has joined this teleconference. I pray your hand will be upon us all. I pray, Lord, you will draw near unto us and help us to draw near unto you and reveal yourself to us day by day. Lord, we love you because you first loved us. You made the ultimate sacrifice for us and we worship and we praise you and we are here, Lord, for no other reason but to give you the praise and the glory and the honor that is due unto your name. We give you thanks and praise and glory in Jesus' name. God bless you all. It's good to have you all and God bless and keep you through the week. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful week, everyone. God bless you all. Sister Rose. Sister Rose.